Going to the pool. Okay. Here we go. Okay. So if you, don't, if you don't want to be on the recording, by the way, it doesn't go out to a million people, but if you don't want to be on there, you can turn off your video and turn it back on if you feel like sharing that kind of thing. But otherwise- it's very nice to see you. And we'll see who else arrives. Um, right, shall I get started? Yes. Okay, let's get going then. So, um, right. So this sort of workshop is basically about line, which is, um, I think what I sort of really do most of. Um, what we're going to do that may confuse you a tiny bit. Let me put my notes. Ah, there we are. Right. So I'm going to run through just a quick overview of what Line can do, but it's not exhaustive. You know, Line can do almost anything. But we'll have a look at that in a second. Then we're going to do four three-minute sketches. We're going to work very fast. So you've just got to get your hand moving. And it's all about getting something down on paper, making marks on paper is what this is all about. Then we're going to do two 10 minute um, sketches and then we'll see whether we have time, but we'll choose probably to do a, a little 15 minute one at the end. Now, I have to say that the, the subjects that I've given you and we'll get to when we get to the exercises should just push you a little bit further on. Um, and the last one is very difficult, but I have every confidence in you all, so um, I think we'll be fine. I'm going to share my screen. <clears throat> um, right, hang on, it hasn't come up. One second. I suppose you can hear the kids. Yep. Um, and for some reason, the share screen doesn't come up. Let me take off the spotlight and see if maybe that's the problem. Try it now. Okay, let's try. Ah, got it, got it, got Sorry. it. Right. Okay. Okay, let me go to the beginning of this. Right. Let's put it on. Can everyone you. see Charlie's uh, PowerPoint? Yes. Okay. Great. So I'm going to just run through sort of how line has been used, what it is. Um, but for me, basically, um, Drawing with line is, is literally just making marks on paper, and that can be with absolutely anything. This beautiful Giacometti drawing sort of pretty much expresses what I would aspire to draw like, because there's every kind of line within there, but it, at the end of the day, it describes the subject. And more than that, it actually puts in some emotion as well. So. Right, I don't expect you to have all these materials, but this is just a quick trawl through, you know, different things that you can use for making marks. So we've got quill, graphite, or charcoal, which we know Sarah's now got some charcoal, so you better use <laughs> it. Um, I use Tombow markers quite a lot, and um, they're great for tone, but they can be good for drawing as well. Simple pencil, obviously brushes, you get different types of shapes and marks with different types of brushes. Markers are something that we architects use a lot. Sorry about the kids. Can, can you can close the door? Is it possible? I could, but um, it's, yeah. Because okay, yeah. we're recording. Anyway. <laughs> it's so right, so a big, fat, a big fat lead pencil, um, which is a 6B, so very soft, very quick, very fast. Um, colored pencils, chopsticks. I've got a friend who uses chopsticks and drips it onto canvas and makes marks of that. We were talking about bamboo pens earlier, uh, brushes, mechanical. I use lots of different types of mechanical pencils, fine liners. Now, there's the last drawing we'll do, which might be best suited to a fine liner, which is really all about line. My fountain pens, I adore my fountain pens. You've got my, um, sorry, that shouldn't be a Pelican fountain pen. The second one, that's a Twisby, which I think is probably, in my opinion, the best fountain pen out there at the moment because the flow of ink and the ability to move your hand very quickly um, is very difficult for fountain pens to do. And this one always seems to deliver. I'm, I agree uh, with you, Charlie. Plus, it's lightweight and it fits in your hand really nicely. Just don't try taking. <laughs> Don't try taking the plunger mechanism apart like I did because it's impossible to put <laughs> back together once you've done that. But yeah, the plunger is nice because you don't have to get dirty refilling it. 
I'm, I'm with you on the Twisby. I'll put the Twisby in the chat in case anyone doesn't know what it is. And it has a very big reservoir of ink as well. And then the Fude pen, which is a which is a bent back nib. So I'll show you that later when I get my things out. Dip pen, I love dip pens and I've just rediscovered them partly because of their flexibility. And brush pens are genius, but difficult to handle. I, th I find difficult to handle. And of course, a walking brush. So let's have a quick look at who did what, when, where. So um, the cave drawings of Lascaux here, line to describe these incredible bison or whatever they are, they're not quite bison, they're water buffalo or something like that. But here, line to describe a subject, to tell a story, to communicate with people. And that's, I think, what line is all about, making marks on paper that have meaning. Again, used in illuminated manuscripts. This is from, I think, the Book of Hours and um, here to convey humor and satire. Um, I, I'm not sure exactly who or how these things came about, but they obviously had some, some latitude in how they could sort of express the subject um, and contemporary subjects. I'm sure this is satirical. Right, two of my all time favorite um, artists in terms of drawing. On the left is um, Dürer. Um, this is a portrait of his mother, probably, I mean, one of the most sensitive portraits ever drawn. And the man who mastered line like nobody else, Holbein, Hans Holbein, absolutely beautiful, sensitive, um, such a sort of emotional line and so simple and so clear. How he manages to make line so simple astonishes me and yet so descriptive. I mean, it, there's practically nothing there, but he's nevertheless described the whole of that person, how he dresses, how he lived, who he is, and there's an emotional quality in it as well. Uh, a little bit of Raphael, a little bit of Michelangelo, and a little bit of Dormier in the middle. Um, Raphael on the left. Now, what Raphael, Michelangelo, and the whole of that Renaissance period used so beautifully was chalk hatching. And this sort of, the way that they've increased the pressure of the line at various points and then graded the shading down gives this fabulous quality to, to their drawings. And this wonderful sort of muscular and lit feel. In the middle is Dormier, who literally just puts down scribbles and yet they have movement and life. So again, line is something the two are very contrasted between the Raphael and the Dormier. And then on the right is a little Michelangelo study for, uh, I think it's for the Pieta, but it might not be the Pieta. But here, just using probably a dip pen of some kind, we're not quite sure exactly what with browning. But again, if you really sort of look at the line and the speed at which the lines move, decelerate, accelerate, they're light, they're heavy, they're thick, they're dense, they're hatched. There's almost everything in that tiny little sketch. So moving on uh, up in history a little bit, uh, on the left, Rembrandt, in the center, the dog is by Rembrandt. And look at that, that's what, I don't know, a few tiny seconds, little strokes. probably took him seconds to do it, I would yeah. say. With probably a graphite pencil or something like that. Um, and yet it's expressed everything about this poor mangy dog. Um, and the same with the, I think he's a beggar on the left. In the, uh, the, the second from the right is the Rubens drawing of his, of his child, which is, I think, the most sensitive um, drawing I've ever seen of anything. But the use of line, again, look at the variation between soft and hard, dark and light, and yet, at the end of the day, and it's mostly done with chalk, I think, in this drawing, it, en it ends up expressing his love for that child. There's no question about that. And then on the right, another Raphael. And again, look at the, 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 sort of the way that they accelerate and decelerate the line, the way that they, they center their focusing and um, decide what's important to represent and the speed at which you can see the speed at which they've drawn them. 
interestingly, I think Raphael was right-handed because of the direction of his hatching, and um, and Michelangelo was undoubtedly left-handed. I find it interesting how little shading is used. Mm. How just very little. And of course it- On, on, the, on the Raphael. Uh, yes. On, well, on it's the two, so on the, both on the right, there's very little shading. Yeah. And it's so minimal and so delicate. And you wonder how precise <laughs> can you be with line and yet look so spontaneous at the same time, which is amazing. So, right, on uh, up in history a little bit, uh, in the centre is Dormier, and again, his wonderful sort of scribbly lines that all come together to, for the joy and the pleasure. Um, so line can express joy and pleasure as well. Lautrec, up on the left, top left, Matisse just below that. Matisse, I mean, a couple of brush strokes. I mean, really just a couple of brush strokes. Um, if he wasn't sort of handling his scissors, then just to sort of, be as simple and expressive as that. Picasso um, drawings are a lot like that, aren't they? The Picasso drawings? Yes, there's a lot of the Picasso doves drawings. or the fat ladies, yeah. yeah. And in the center at the bottom is Lautrec and on the uh, bottom right is uh, Van Gogh. Um, two very, very contrasting techniques. What I find with um, Van Gogh is that he tends to describe the form with his line. And Lautrec does the same thing, but in a very, very different, far more graphic way, and much more sensitive in some ways. Although the thing about Van Gogh's drawings, of course, is that he gets right into the soul of the, of the sitter by, by what looks like quite a clumsy drawing, but it isn't clumsy at all. It's very, very refined. Um, so beautiful drawings, but incredibly different styles, uses of lines, um, methods of playing around with what line can do. All it means is that it's just a question of the brain connecting with the hand on the paper and looking at something. And what you have to, I think, remember with line is that it's not, it's your brain interpreting what it sees. It's not your eyes. Your eyes are only there so that you can look at things, but then your brain is doing all the work behind it. Right, I brought this in. This is a contemporary artist. He's actually local here in London, Luke Adam Hawker. His drawing, if you look on the drawing on the left of St Paul's, it looks beautiful, but horrendously precise. And the reason that I've blown it up there is you can see just how shaky his line is. I mean, there is nothing straight. There's nothing particularly sort of measured in any way. Yet it all builds up into this incredible formula that that generates these beautiful smart drawings that are so precise or appear to be so precise and yet the guts of it is not precise at all and in, there's a lot of videos of uh, Luke Adam Hawker on Instagram and also on YouTube of him actually drawing and you'll see that he just sort of starts somewhere and just sees where and how he can make it work and how he can make it go and he gradually sort of pulls his drawings together. They're usually very architectural as well. Now, completely different again, um, Jeanette Barnes, who has just launched a book and I went to her exhibition last week. Um, she, she does uh, architectural drawings from all over the world. And if you want rough line, this is it, <laughs> this is, how rough can a line get and still express the movement of a city so easily, so quickly, and so, so precisely? Um, on the right, you've got Anthony Gormley. Now, this is an unusual use of line because this is all wire. It's a sculpture, but he's used line to express form. And being a sculptor, of course, it, it works, but the energy and the buzzing of this, um, of this sculpture is, is, I think, incredible. Uh, these are a few of mine, I confess. Um, so all different types of line. So the one on the top left is that's in Kew Gardens. We're going to do something like that, hopefully later, either that or a skyscape. This is done with a dip pen. So dip pens 
appear to be quite slow until you get used to using them. And then you just get into a rhythm of dipping it in the ink, coming down, you get sort of, I don't know, half a minute, and then you go back and dip and back and dip. But what it does have is a very flexible nib. And if you're carrying sort of something like black ink, then you can really sort of push the black ink to the back so that everything begins to recede. I, I love dip pens, but I don't often get them out. Um, the, the one in the middle there is St Anne's Church on Kew Green, which is a study for a bigger picture that I'm working on at the moment. Charlie, can, I, quick... can I interrupt you and ask you, why don't you get them out? Is it because they're more difficult to use when you're out in plain air? They're very difficult for transporting, you know, to, to be, you need a stable surface to put yeah, your ink bottle on. Yeah. Because as I found out the other day, if you put it onto a slightly inclined surface, the bottle starts sliding down and then you find you're trying to sort of chase the bottle and then hopefully it's not going to fall off the edge. <laughs> so um, right. So the middle drawing is just a quick sketch just to get that sort of, I was looking to find out how to sort of draw the dynamism of this church. Um, and this was the second study. I did one in pencil first, a quick one in ink, and then go on to sort of quite a sort of accurate drawing um, but the idea is to not fuss not worry too much about where your lines are going to get them down get it on paper you can always adjust and it doesn't matter it doesn't matter at all up on the right um, I'm now I'm going to life drawing classes so this was on Thursday was uh, these are also and we're going to do some in a minute um, some three minute poses um, so these were very, very quick um, and done with a soft pencil at the time. Um, down on the left is a much more studied um, line drawing, very much all about line. This is the structure inside the temperate house in Kew Gardens. Um, and here, really, it's all about the juxtaposition of form, shape and line. So this one is is quite detailed it may become a painting in the end i'm not quite sure but it will certainly become one of the studies um but it's all about sort of that is about precise line although if you were to look at it in detail they're not very precise they all add up to making something precise a very very different style of drawing is this elevation of my local high street um, this was just fun to do, really, and I did it from photographs, I confess. But um, again, just simple graphic line. But again, did you use a line. micro on this, Charlie? Pardon? Did you use a micro? What's a micro? Um, uh, like a fine liner. Oh, I see. Um, no, I did it all with my Twisby. Okay. And yes. actually, there's a run of this. This is five meters long or five yards long um, <coughs> on a concertina sketchbook. And it was just good fun. But, but you can use line in a very graphic way as well. It doesn't have to describe form. It can also describe uh, um, just a simple flat space. And that, these are very graphic. They're very flat. Um, you would never see things quite this way. But what was interesting about this was, of course, looking sometimes above the level of the shops to the architecture. And then finally, on the right is a soft pencil drawing of a ram that I did. Uh, I can't remember. I think it was, well, it's in a zoo, but I've forgotten whether it was in Paris or in London. Anyway, so this was a drawing of a ram. Um, the ram did not stay still, unfortunately. Um, so I made a lot of it up once I'd sort of observed what he was doing and getting on with. Right, so Beautiful. line. Now, what I've done here, and I won't, well, I won't talk too much about each one and answer, let people absorb this. Um, I've just jotted down various different types of lines. This is by no means exhaustive. Um, types of lines in types of materials or types of medium, long hatching, short hatching, um, and fude pen. I'll show you all these in a, in a moment. Um, 
Suffice it to say that you can do almost anything and everything in line except colour. And you can do colour as well, of course. But um, line can be incredibly expressive if you allow it to be expressive. So that's what we're going to try and do today. And that's partly why we're going to do some very, very fast sketches because it's not detail we want to concentrate on, it's, um, it's movement or, um, or expression or what we're going to call gesture. So gesture drawing. Right, these are types of methods of using line in order to help you to give, um, if you like, the spine of your drawing. Um, the, the guy in the middle there, Adam Riches, if you can find his videos on YouTube, he does this with biro. He doesn't stop. The, the pen is constantly in contact with the paper and he just gradually builds up these drawings and they've got a sort of strange haunting quality to them. But they're all about sort of the gesture, the movement, and he finds that movement. Um, so gesture drawing is what artists normally sort of refer to as sort of finding the movement or the, the spirit of the drawing. And again, this is where Dormier comes into his own because his drawings are just all about the movement and that wonderful sort of dancing figure. Um, but, you know, cartoonists use it, comic book artists use it. I mean, everybody uses it in some way, shape or form. It's just a question of pushing it so that you actually get how it can help you. Ah, and Anne wants to favorite. point out this. I have to interrupt because my very favorite is Charles McKesey. Is that how you say his name? McKesey? Uh, Charlie has it too. Uh, I have one with gold. So anyway, he, he is all about the dip ink pen and all about gesture. And he has some, some watercolor added, which makes me very happy. But anyway, if you haven't seen this book, you should definitely check it out. It's just beautiful yeah. and it's a lovely message for adults. Uh, we, think, we think he draws those with a bamboo pen. And, yeah, which uh, I actually have one. I'm going to use one today. This is my, this is my bamboo stick. I don't have one, but I think I'm gonna need to get one. Use blue and sepia ink. So I'll show you yeah. what this can do if I, if I don't ruin my pictures. I'll, I'll share later. <laughs> and what was the name of that book? It came across as a little called, fuzzy. Yeah, the boy, the mole, the fox, and the horse. Uh -huh. Thank and you. I will put. I'll put this in the chat also. Yeah, it, it is. It is exceptional. Um, and whilst we're at it, just to briefly mention, oh, Adam Corker also has a book which you might really want to see, which is called Together. And I think all of these are available on Amazon. And that also- Or your some, local bookseller. Some of these are sort of quite remarkable. The, it's, it's actually a very awesome, a very, yeah, I've got to show you this. It's just so beautiful. Wow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right, okay. Um, next, contour line, right. Contour line describes a form or describes an edge, but it's not really an edge because it's where there isn't an edge is a contour. So um, the people who really excel at this are, of course, comic book artists. And one of my favorite is Neil Adams. Um, they use contour line. That is the point at which a form turns and become something else. Now you can see in the Henry Moore drawing, what he does is he describes the form as with those apples below, they're described by the contour lines. It's exactly the same as it works on a map, is that the lines show how the shape of the space changes or the physical structure of the space. And Hockney's drawing of his mother there is all about how lines change when they come to what we think of as the edge of the form. But of course, there is no such thing as an edge. Things don't just suddenly, well, unless they're drawn, 
They don't suddenly fall off an edge. They are all about how lines change the form and, and encourage your eyes just to, to literally caress the forms. Um, and you can see the same with the Van Gogh drawing at the bottom as well, is that, you know, we would draw a profile. Well, actually, there is no such thing really as a profile. It's just where the shape turns around and away from us. So contour and the methods of using contour and describing form are, I think, very, very, very important to understand and to play with as well, and to see how expressive your lines can be made in order to describe the form and what you're thinking. Right, ready? That's well, about right. Sorry, I have a question, if you don't mind. Before yes. we get to exercises, I'm curious here, who has, who has done a lot of drawing? Um, maybe you can raise your virtual hand or you can just shout out, because I'm kind of curious where everybody is at with, with drawing with line in particular. Some some experience. Some experience. Okay. Any first? I, I, tell, I tell you what, Karen. Yeah, Karen. Yeah. Karen, do you have a little experience, or are you a newcomer to it? I have a lot of pencils. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great start. <laughs> I wasn't sure if you two went to art college together because you had said that you were college roommates. No business. Uh, no, <laughs> Ron is far more creative. I, I just aspire. And I've been a potter for a long time and have taken a few drawing classes. Okay. I think actually everybody uses line to describe things. I mean, I've just pulled off a book from my shelves by a guy called Dan Rome, who uh, advocates sort of drawing and description. So with this book. I mean, we've all seen diagrams, we've all expressed a story or something or an idea or a concept with a diagram. That's drawing. That's what it is. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's um, chemical, mechanical, technical or scientific. We all use um, drawings to express ideas. A bit less so now, of course, with computers, but um, which is one of the things I sort of rail against with students is that they do need to draw by hand because you do, it's a different experience. Ginny, you had your, so, Ginny, I'm curious what you were gonna tell us. You're, you're muted, Ginny. Oh, hit your space bar, Ginny, cause we can't hear you. Oh, you're on your iPad. Okay, give it a sec. It's okay. No, I said a million years ago, I went to Chouinard Art Institute. Oh, didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I know a million. I know your watercolor work. So Charlie's really the the sketcher, and I'm the watercolor artist. So I don't work that much with line. But when I was in college a million year, years ago, I used to do a lot of line drawing. I only really came upon watercolor about four years ago. So yeah, it's interesting. And in watercolor, we don't necessarily use a lot of line. But I know Christine. I know that you kind of combine line with color in a lot of your at least in your plein air sketches that I've seen. Yeah. It, I do, and yet I don't really have any confidence at all in, in um, my line drawing. So this is what I need to learn. Okay. Oh, great. Well, I just kind of wanted to get a sense of where everyone was at because everyone is different, right? And I think all of our works will end up looking completely different, not just from the different materials we choose, but also to the types of marks that we make and potentially with the skill at which we have to capture what we see in front of us. But this is supposed to just be a, a fun experimental group of exercises. So just enjoy it. I know I'm going to, and I probably will add color, Charlie, because I can't help myself. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> I think the, key, the key to all of this is to experiment. Try different mediums, try different materials. Um, just see what works for you. I mean, I fall in love and out of love with all sorts of different things at different times. Suddenly you pick up an old pencil and you get, oh, why haven't I used this? And then you get bored with it and then you use a pen or something else. Um, but it is worth experimenting because um, every different medium um, or material will bring something else to the quality of 
either your line or your painting or your drawing or whatever it may be. Um, so I, I think be very experimental. Um, get cheap paper, practice, 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 as always, because um, that's really the way to, to do it, to, to improve and to, to move forward. But you do have to combine practice with, um, with observation as well. That's the other thing. And that's why plein air is so important, because there you're looking at the subject and you're looking at the subject three dimensionally and trying to convert it into two dimensions. And Very important. Really, that's, yeah. that's what line, apart from being sort of marks of making meanings, uh, it's translating three dimensions into two dimensions. And it's, um, as you can see, with, I mean, there's some wonderful artists who have made a virtue of converting um, line into something that expresses a three-dimensional thing in two dimensions. And it's a remarkable, but it's so easy to do, or relatively easy, I should say. Sorry, I didn't mean that. Right, are we are we ready to get started? I think so. So you're going to share the, all the drawings and talk about our timings, and then we'll show the drawings individually so they're larger for everybody. <clears throat> You want to, and you want to <coughs> camera on my pad? My, my uh, well, pad. first, uh, let's show the drawings first. Right. And share. Okay. Uh, right. Now, I did say one or two of these are going to be quite challenging. First of all, we're going to do the two, we're going to do a dancer and then another dancer and then another dancers and then maybe the lady with the, um, with the fabric last. Now, the reason that I've chosen these is because they're very gestural. Um, they're all about movement, rhythm. Um, I mean, the, the, the dancer at the bottom, the male dancer, I think, and the female dancer for that matter, um, you could probably express in one or two lines, but hopefully we're gonna do a bit more than that because we've got a whole three minutes, tons of time to do everything. Um, once we've you done that, you have to work then, fast to capture the, you do. And the feeling the and the, the gesture. Yeah. Is to really sort of try to express the movement, try to express the form and the movement. Once we've done sort of four of those very quickly, uh, we'll see how we get on. Then I want to move to, you'll see that there's the two plants on the right hand side. So we we'll do two of those that sort of I don't know, seven, 10 minutes, something like that. Um, they're very different types of marks. In order to draw these plants, you've really got to think, how am I going to express this with just line or maybe a little bit of color, but even if you're using color, particularly these plants will need some edges, will need some lines and will need some contours. Once we've done that, um, I would prefer if you just did the cityscape, and that will give you 15 minutes for, and cityscapes can be really intimidating, but don't be. All we have to do is break it down into small bits. Nobody's going to judge it. So <laughs> all we're going to do is we're going to move gently across that screen and work it out. You can do, if you prefer, the drawing at the bottom, which is the Minka house in um, Kew Gardens. But if you can stomach it, if you want to get on with it, then I think the cityscape, will be lovely and that I think is going to be very suitable to quite a fine line because there is detail but it's not extreme detail. All right. Well we have um, time to share at the end where we can share and ask questions. I hope so. Yes. Okay. Let's say yes. We All will right. share. Well, I'm ready to time so if you want to go ahead and... Um, and I think we should share Right, I'm going to put these two up first in case you haven't downloaded them. If you want to grab the screen or something, then do um, have a quick look. And he says, grab the screen. You can take your camera and take a picture of it. And because Charlie's going to show his, his drawing. So you're welcome to draw along or watch what Charlie's doing, but we can't put both of those things up at the same time. Yeah, unfortunately we can't. Um, Right, I'm going to use a soft-ish pencil for this. I'm going to use this one, which I think is a 0.7, but it's got a really nice soft lead in it. Unfortunately, it's beginning to fall to pieces, but I love it. 
So that's what I'm going to use for this first drawing. So three Let's minutes on the left, on the drawing on the left, and then we'll do three minutes on the right. <laughs> Ladies first, as it were. All right. Okay, whenever you're ready, Anne, we've got three minutes. Okay, ready, everyone, go. Yep, go ahead. Okay, let's do it. Oh, let me just get it up there. Right, do you want me to share my screen? Yes. My camera, if I can. One point. Right. Ooh. I'm losing time. Oh, no. Uh, Charlie, you can do two minutes. Uh, yeah, it hasn't come up. I don't, know why, I don't know why it's being so complicated. Oh, no. Let's <laughs> right. work, shall we? We can pause. Hang on. No, don't pause. I'll catch up. Okay. Catch up. okay. Let's go. We'll work Sorry. it out. The, we'll work it out for the next one, Charlie. Yep. We will. I think also with things like this, there are sort of <coughs> key elements, key movement elements that need to be found. Say that was beautiful piece of dance. It's worth also, once you've sort of got the basic movement is looking at um, the, some of the negative spaces that you might find helpful. You might not, but you might. Ten seconds, everyone. Ten seconds. Yeah, it goes fast, huh? Well done. That's it. Okay, we're done. Right, stop. How did you get on? Let me see if I can share what I did. Everyone can we'll hold, it, hold up because we don't have time to go one by one. But if everybody holds up, if you like, okay. oh, wonderful, this everyone. Wow. Okay. Ah, beautiful work. Yeah. Charlie, you got a lot done. Uh, why Sarah, I, Sarah yours screen. is so rough and you've got the color in there too, though. Or the, the value, I should say. Yeah, you saw the planter first. I didn't I couldn't see anything anyway. Yeah. Okay. I tell you what, I'm gonna give you 10 seconds just to to fiddle with it. Now that you've taken a break, just 10 seconds just to sort of Either I wouldn't say improve it, but just to sometimes I find that this is where it really comes together is that I just then sort of put a harder line around the outside and then I get the form a little bit better. I, I so usually you, take the last, um, the change in between, I change, I put it some color in or value is what I usually use it uh, for. Okay, that's all I needed. Just that. I always find also, right, I think we have to stop. Uh, I always find that there are certain key points in life drawing that I've 
had forgotten about them. One is this little, I can't remember what it's called, this little cleft where all the muscles come down into that point. The next is, of course, the belly button and that sort of where the rib cage opens out over it. And the other is the direction of the hips and the direction of the shoulders as well. And those are, I think, particularly if you're drawing things in movement, those become critical. Ready for another second one? Everybody yes. ready? Yes, I'm going right. to. The number better. two is the beautiful young man. I'll just, I'm going to try to share. Ah, I've got sharing. Oh, great. Uh, let me just do that quickly. So it's this man in an, is that an arabesque? Is that the right word? I'm not quite sure. Oh, you are asking the wrong person, but go ahead everyone, I'll hit start. Okay, I'll tell you a quick secret is that when I was a teenager, I thought I wanted to become a ballet dancer actually. Get out. I didn't. Things we never knew about Charlie. Exactly. So what's interesting, I think, is the difference between the shoulder line and the hip line on this guy is quite extreme, actually. The twisting is great. You've chosen such good pictures. I love, I love drawing dancers for this very reason, because they make the most amazing shapes. And I do a lot of live online drawing and a lot of the the models are actually either dancers or um, aerial artists, which is also quite interesting. Okay. Because they, they really know how to move and makes it so interesting. Yeah. So he's got a lovely twist on his torso. I just find exaggerating those twists can be really yeah. interesting and also they if I exaggerate them they actually end up not being as exaggerated as they think they're going to be especially when there's a lot of foreshortening going on like there is with his the knee that's shown to the right which is his left knee yes Very easy to forget how how enjoyable um, life drawing can be, but we're concentrating on line, of course. Aren't we? The foreshortening on the knee, the raised knee, is quite tricky, isn't it? Yeah, it's It is, and it I think of all, of all athletes, um, dancers have got the most perfect bodies. How much time have we got left? I just have it set to ring on us. I haven't been looking. Okay. Probably almost there. Oh, there you go. You were right on it, Charlie. Don't know how that's possible. Okay, do you want to take another minute then? And complete things? Nope. Yeah. Well, you, you, gave everyone, you gave everyone a minute before. That's why I asked. <laughs> well, no, that was afterwards. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. Yeah, let me see if I can get this up. Yes, I can. Where is it? Oh, except, oh, there it is. Yeah. All right, uh, now I've got the screen finally going. So oh, that's beautiful. my set. I can see a bit of adjustment that needs to be made here, particularly. But very lovely, lovely poses. I do like that. Would you can like you to stop share so everyone can, you can tile everybody? Okay. Everyone hold up there, but you have to stop the share, I think. Oh, Jenny, that's lovely. That's beautiful. 
Charlie, if you stop your share, everyone can see each other's in a grid. Sorry. There you go. Oh, beautiful. Oh, nice. Very, yeah, really lovely. Well, grid view. Good job. Wow. Everyone got the twist really nicely. Lovely. Yeah. That's beautiful. Stuff. Right. Ready for the next? I so think I, what ready. I think now is change medium. Oh. Don't use your favorite medium, use something else. Ooh. Um, okay. Use pen, brush pen, maybe. Now we're going to draw. We've got the two ladies leaping in the air. Uh, let me just quickly put that back up on the screen if I can. If you've been using pencil, has anyone resorted to eraser? No, no time. No, I didn't think I was allowed. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, uh, it is it is a challenge that I'll give to you is to put away your eraser. Just commit to the line, and if it's wrong, draw right over it. Just go right over it. Yeah, it takes time to erase, and it takes away from the time you have in those quick sketches. So, right. I'm Just a little a extra challenge there. I don't know why the sharing has gone weird. I keep clicking it, but nothing's happening. Don't know. Mm. Try again. No. I can't seem to share the screen. Anyway, okay, so we're ready for the Can next do one. It, Charlie, I have it open. Okay. Can everyone see mine? Yeah. Yes. Right, okay. we're doing these, these two. Double the difficulty. We're doing the bottom one, the two dancers together. And whenever you're ready, call it, but change your medium. I'm going to use a pen now and see how you get on. It's only line. It's only line. Okay. I call oh. start. Okay. That's, that is very tricky. I don't know where to start on this part. So one of the tricks is you can start with this where you think the center of gravity line is when you have um, only a moment. And the center of gravity is through her hand. And the bottom one. The bottom yes. one, through her hand. So draw a line going straight up. That's the center of gravity. I and then start that. from there. Yeah. 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 Very difficult. Nicely difficult, but very difficult. Yeah, and if you just do the loose, no pencil, then what you can do is go over when you have time or even later, you can go over the correct lines and darken them and that way you have sort of negated the, the lighter lines or the mistakes that you've made perhaps. I don't know if this woman on top has a center of gravity. She's in the air. In the air, even more difficult. Well, I didn't make it easy for myself, did I? It's a, it's not easy, no. It's not easy, it's very tricky. Especially the way her arms are torquing and everything. It's like she's double jointed. Exactly. I think she's just very flexible.
Five seconds. No, no. I didn't get anywhere near it. That was a tough one. Yeah. Zoomed. I suspect the next one will be easier. <laughs> I think I don't think it can be more difficult than that. So yes. How did everybody get on? It was really hard. <laughs> I didn't like switching medium. I did not like switching to pencil, I have to say. Not a big fan, but I'll hold mine up. If anyone else yeah. wants to hold up theirs. Me too. That was very Oh, difficult. that's so nice. Your scribbliness is so nice, Charlie. Let's see. Oh, beautiful. Oh, wow, Chris. Wow. 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 Yeah, Chris looks great. Good. Rana, beautiful. And Karen, right. you too. Wow. Sarah, let's see yours again. I was holding it upside down. Oh, is, those are wonderful. You've, yeah, again, you're- No, it was that, this way. That leotard oh. in there. It's so nice. So you have 10 seconds if you wish just to refine, but that's it. I think that's the 10 seconds gone, isn't it? Found myself wanting ink, especially to get the shadow. <laughs> Really, well, like I'm not. I'm used to having, yeah, um, some ink, not just line. So it's 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 a nice challenge to try it without. But the the upper woman is very difficult because she's not grounded in any way, so that makes it quite difficult, I think, because you can't sort of root her down. You can. She's also like, like folded so tightly into herself, and yeah. I ended up making her too short and squatty, I think. Yep. Anyway, right. here we go. If you have the courage and you wish to, um, we're on to now the lady with all the fabric. Um, Let me get the timer we, going again. If you can change your medium again, fantastic, why not? It won't do you any harm and it's all an experiment. All right. So, here we go. Oh no, we're starting. Is that yes. it? Yes, yes, yes. Change, 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 change. Oh, it's so blurry. This one is blurry, which I didn't realize before. Yeah, it's, not, it's not a great photograph, but uh, what I liked about it was the all the fabric because that gives you an opportunity just to play a little bit with the sort of the dynamicness of the lines. If there dynamism, dynamism. Dy dynamism. I'll just help you with that. That's what we say in America. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you get it all right. Right. Also, tricky. So I did two live draws this week, and I feel like has it helped me? I just don't even know. But for those of you guys who like to do figure drawing and you like a live draw like this with a model, I um, my favorite is, and I've tried a lot during the pandemic. It's um, a school called Henley on Thames, and they it's, they do um, evenings in England, so that would be around eleven a.m here in the US and they're two hours and they get the, the best models and the best banter and the best poses and all of that. So just, I love, um, I love doing their live draws. Yeah. Henley on Thames yeah. School and they're on Instagram. Um, I can also, anyone who wants can put their website up for you because they're just amazing. It's very inexpensive, like fifteen dollars, um, because they have so many people coming that they can still pay the model quite well and not charge too much. Yeah. So the life drawing class that I went to, as I said, the first time for about thirty years, um, was in Soho, which is lovely to go to at the moment, and it's also not very expensive, but. There were enough people there so that it could justify the expense um, and they can pay the model and everything so that all worked out pretty well 
and it was very, very, very enjoyable. Right, how is everybody doing? Working, working, working. Yeah, working, working. If you like a bumblebee, I've got it down. <laughs> See, that's what's wrong. Oh, oh, wow. That was it. Is that time? That was time. Okay. I am cheating just a tiny bit. Take another right. <laughs> right. All right. So go ahead, all. Oh, that's beautiful. Ooh, thank beautiful. you. I exaggerated wow. those wings a little bit. <laughs> Anybody want to hold up theirs? Or are you guys still going? Ooh. Christine, wow. Oh, my goodness. Everyone, so good. Very good. Sarah, that's awesome. Wow, Chris, very nice. Those Tombo. Karen, that's <laughs> too great. Tombo, very nice with the Tombo. Yeah, I love the Tombo markers. Great idea. Yeah. Very good. Okay, so right. that's it for yeah. our four figures. Yeah. So now for something completely different. I will try and share the screen again. I don't know why it just will not allow me to do it. Um, um, I don't know. Let me see. What did I do to you? Something to do with my computer. So I'll turn over the host to you. If I turn host to you, let's see if that works. Okay. Try it now. Just to, I mean, just for the sake of making a change. It just does not come up. I'm clicking on it, I promise. Mm. Okay, that's okay. I can I can do it. Yeah. If you put the um Here we stuff. Are. So we right. I just don't have the individual slides, but that's okay. You okay. guys can snapshot these. It, or if you have better eyesight than I have, you don't need to do that, but I'll make it kind of as big as I can right here. And you guys both have both of those botanicals, correct? Can everyone see them? Yes. Thumbs up. What are we gonna do this time? So right. we're gonna do about eight to 10 minutes, Charlie, you said? Yeah, I think so. How about uh, eight? How about eight? Yeah. Each, but I would just do one of them, choose one and then do the other one afterwards. I would suggest that this one is relatively straightforward, actually. Um, but I would use, well, no, I'm not going to tell you what to use. Use whatever you wish, Which? however you wish, but it must be about line. So yeah. now you need a different way to express line so that um, you express this plant, which is, I'm not quite sure exactly what it is. But it's a know. euphorbius on the bottom. I don't know what the top is. I think it's a euphorbius cactus. I thought euphorbius had all those wonderful sort of clusters of flowers. It's a group. It's a really big group. Yeah. yeah it is. I do know it's a group, but I don't know much. About so it. Charlie right. can't share screen. Would you guys like, would anyone like for me to share my screen and you can watch me draw, or at least it'll be on the recording and you could go back and watch? Yeah. Anyone interested in that? Yep. Yes. yes. Okay. Which one are we supposed to be doing? first um i would do the spiky one first the euphorbius first and then do the cactus cactus one afterwards. oh but you know what i'm sorry i have to actually take a picture of it really quickly because i uh, since i'm sharing i have to get it on my screen so there we go okay. let's try one more time and to share you want to try one more time yeah give me one more go and yeah go ahead try it much rather have you do it I don't know why it just does. I'm clicking on one participant and share it at a time. Nothing. Mm. No, I'm sorry, Charlie. What you can do no. is, why don't I do this one? And then what you can do is you can exit out, come back in, and it might work. So it's just a funny thing. It's probably okay. just a Zoom thing. All right, you guys ready? Go. Yep. Yes. 
All right, we hit go. Are you are you using color Anne or just line? No, Charlie said I'm not allowed to use my color. No, you're all mine today. <laughs> and that's okay because I've been doing a lot of botanicals with line lately. We have. That's not to say I won't add color later because I, I just can't help it, but. Such a beautiful plant, isn't it? Oh yeah. <laughs> I think this plant is the sort of plant that I saw growing in California when I was there. Well, they had these um, for sure on Catalina. Just that it has so many varieties, right? I think when I went for that, for my morning coffee in Long Beach is, and walked down that road, there were a lot of these types of sort of slightly succulent plants um, and slightly sort of spiky plants too. I don't know what that means. Succulents can be, can be spiny, it's just they're a different species and I think that they use more water than cacti. I think that is probably- Is that, is that the difference between the two, do you think? Probably, I'm just guessing. I don't really know. I can't say I'm an expert on it, so I'm not. What does sort of amaze me with some of these is um, the geometry with which they grow. It's incredible. They almost grow to geometric patterns. They do, and they also can geometrically space themselves out in the desert. So if you go to the desert, a lot of the time you see, it looks like planted fields. For example, the Joshua tree, it looks like a planted yeah. field and it's not, it's just that they, their root systems space out so that they're not um, competing for water or because they are competing for water, maybe, I should say. So something I wanna show you is that when I use this bamboo pen, if anyone is watching, I what I like is that I can actually drag the ink from somewhere else. Mm. I can drag it upwards. Actually, what can I do this in watercolor too, which is fun, so. I'm gonna run over and get my zip pen. He's always copying me. <laughs> it's worth it. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Highest form of compliment. I'm kidding. We are, Charlie and I really um, inspire and learn from each other, which is really great. I've noticed. I've been doing so much more architectural stuff since mm. I've been hanging yeah. out with Charlie more. Get pen. It's not working with that. I got well, a little bit lost here, Charlie. Help me here, I got lost. Where am I? It doesn't matter. It doesn't when you're this messy, but I do like to know where I'm going a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I don't think you can beat a dick pen, to be honest, but the control that you get on the the variation on the strokes, absolutely love it, love it, love it, love it. So we're halfway, everyone. Just so you don't oh, feel too stressed out, we've got some time. Yeah. It's once you um, and I'm convinced this is part of the reason why we start off slow in these um, drawings and go faster is that you feel spoiled for time. Mm. after you've been rushed so much? Well, I'm a big fan of drawing fast, but I am learning to slow down a bit because um, what I like about drawing fast is that then you, you focus only on what you need and not really on just sort of sitting back on what you know. with these um, bamboo dips, as with regular dips, also what's kind of neat is that you can let the ink run out and then make really faint marks as the ink is running out. 
So you don't need to keep re-dipping. It's almost like a dry brush in watercolor. Yeah. So you can pick up ink that's already on the paper. Yeah, totally. Like just right here, just spread it out a bit. Yeah, that's really nice. What's been really interesting for me working with um, or on Kew Gardens has been trying to find different sort of marks to indicate all the different plants. Um, because I'm positive once I've finished the book that there will be some academic somewhere who's going to come up to me and say, you do realise, of course, that that isn't quite euphorbia exponentially and or exponences whatever it might be and i know that i'm going to be in trouble because someone is going to um to hold me up and say those are not the right marks for that plant so it's been interesting to try and find lots of different ways without saying too much um because you don't want to get completely sort of hamstrung into drawing each plant perfectly because it's just not not necessary well, and your book is also about the architecture of Kew Gardens. It's not a definitive botanical manual of Kew Gardens. No, no, no. But you cannot avoid the, um, the plants. No, but I can't. don't think anyone can hold you to account for being using artistic oh. license. I mean, they can't. They can try. But that, you're an artist, and it's, um, it's not a botanical manual. I think there might be some plant trolls out there. Yeah, right. <laughs> there probably are. But that's the problem with the internet anyway. It is. That anyone, everyone can be a critic and pick on and fight a million battles in one day and pick on the stupidest stuff. Oh, I just ruined my, oh well. No, no, you didn't, no. Just go over it. No. There's no such thing. <laughs> but these shapes really are amazing. They really are fabulous. So you're working on that. I'm working on the spiky one. Mind you, that one's quite spiteful too. But. Oh, look at that. Sorry, I didn't give anyone a more of a warning there. <laughs> right, I didn't quite get as far as I wanted, but hey. Oh, so you guys can do a little holding up. Everybody is okay. Can't wait to see what everybody did with this one. Oh, wow. So different, everyone. Oh, oh, oh those are nice marks. Marvelous, Very everyone. Nice. Marvelous. And so everyone's is different. As always. Amazing. Okay. Oh, wow. Really good. So we were picking one plant, and now we're going to have a 15 minute to do the architecture? The Is that, oh, the second plant or the architecture? I would, say, I would say do the second plant and then we'll do the skyscape if we can. Okay. All right, everyone, second plant. Charlie, can you share? Did you exit out and come back? Then I will try again, one second. Let me just organize myself. One of the problems with, uh, of course, a dip pen is that you get it all over your hands. And another problem is that you can't just turn the page. It's still so wet. Can you guys see any of that sheen? See it bouncing like right there? So I can't turn the page without it getting wet. Oh, yay. All right. Oh, wow. Here we are. Nice. Ice cream. Right. OK, boys and girls, ready? Um, yep, <laughs> timing. Okay. Hang on. 
I think I might. Nope, I started. You started? Oh. <laughs> I mean, I started the timer. Sorry, you want me to stop it? No, 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 no. no. You can do Just it, gonna... Charlie. Name it out. You got this. Ooh, interesting. They've got slightly square sides, these plants. Oh, that's interesting. They're very geometric. Well, very structural as well, aren't they? Very. Yeah, they're like a building. They're like weird buildings. So. One of my favorite plants to draw and paint, and I've done it several times. What, this cactus plant? Yeah, the one you're Maybe. doing. Yeah. Hmm, yeah. very interesting. I really do enjoy doing a bit of line drawing because mm. I do so much watercolor that it's just, it's a nice change, you know, plus it helps my drawing skills, which is important. You know, it's one thing to oh. paint and paint loose and it's another to, to hone your drawing skills. So I actually <laughs> really like it. That you do need drawing skills for painting. Not necessarily. I mean, you can you can do a lot of abstract and not have the drawing skills. It just you can have an eye for form and color and shape, and especially if you do a lot of abstracts. Yeah, I have a lot of students in my class who do a great job with painting and don't have the drawing skills, but it only takes them so far. So there are times where they struggle because they don't have those skills, especially when we do something more literal. Yeah. So what I'm trying to do is to get a slightly more sort of spiky mark, let's say. Spiky mark? Then, yeah. Uh, and I think one of the other things that happens a lot is I lose track of where my eyes are and then I find I'm drawing the wrong bit in the wrong place or the right bit in the wrong place. Um, that happens quite a lot, especially with architecture where you're looking and counting sort of through buildings. It's very, very easy to, to sort of miscount a whole floor sometimes, as I do. So what do you do about that? Do you put like those little dot marks in first that some people do? I think you just accept that you've got it wrong. But there are <laughs> there are no, scripters like Liz Smith though who says to put in um, like she they put little dots in biro or in um, pencil and yeah. then they go and add detail after they get kind of those dots in place. I don't think I'm quite that organized to be honest. Much as I'd like to be. Mm. But this is really interesting, this plant, actually. I'm not quite. We're just under halfway. Someone's making marks. I hear those wonderful scratchy marks.
I was going to say too, sometimes it's nice to sketch on location and just do line drawings because um, they can be nice studies for watercolor, but you can capture, I find a lot of the time much more quickly. So for example, when we were in Catalina and we we're on the actual Hummer, I could do a couple of uh, sketch drawings, just a few. And then yeah. either add some color to them later or just add color notes. And that was that was kind of nice. Is that the secret to capturing something when you're moving? Just get like the basic, very, very, very basic line down and then go back later? Um, that's one good trick. I mean, would, I was thinking that maybe our next um, workshop could be on capturing moving figures or even on an animal live draw and we can get some videos. So I have some great videos of the buffalo and um, even though we didn't see them on our trip, they were from the trip before, but I think like it, it's a lot of fun and there are a lot of, there's more than one tip I should say. So there's a lot of tips, but if you guys think that would be a fun one then we can go ahead and plan that for the next one. Yes. <laughs> that would be great. Okay. Fun. Great, great, great. I don't know. Carly and I usually take turns leading them anyway. So it's my turn to find a topic. So sounds good. So I think we're getting near. We have a minute left. You know, this, this spiky plant is harder than it looks. Yeah, it is. It's quite tricky to get something out of it, isn't it? Well, it's something that makes sense. I don't think I got it, <laughs> but oh well. It looks like something, I just don't know what. I did a portrait the other day and it didn't look like the person, but it looked like a person. And I was very happy with well, so other, other aspects of it. <laughs> But that's looking great, Charlie. I love that, the wiggly lines and the shading you're using. Mm. But that hatching is nice because you actually can see hatchings like that in, in the actual cactus. So yeah. it's, oh, there we go. All right. All righty. All righty. Okay. Right, just a couple more. Boxes. Yeah, do you want to stop your share, Charlie, so everyone can share and hold yeah. their stuff? Right, well, you've all seen mine. Mine might oh, wow. run, but. That's a, that's a starburst. Woo. Beautiful. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, everyone. Oh, wow. Woo! I think we're improving with practice. What a good one. Yeah. yeah. Love it. So, Christine, what did you use for The spiky one? Yeah. What um, well, I, I heard Sarah say tambo, and I said, I have tambos, because yeah. I have different um, yeah. Colors, but I used this um, really fat sharpie in the middle to get the darkest section right there. Yeah, really nice. That that really captures that plant, doesn't it? Thank you. How did everybody else get on? I liked it. I got used to really <laughs> using right. my. Yeah. Yeah, Good. and you get used to working faster too, and. So my challenge on the next one, I'll throw a challenge in there, Charlie, for our cityscape. We have longer, we have about 15 minutes, let's say. Um, my challenge will be to make a different kind of mark than you've been making. So if you've been making ha hashes or cross hatches, maybe try a scribble mm. or, um, okay. or dots like a pointillism, so yep different ways of doing it, but you don't have to. It's just an added challenge. I think we, can we lose Charlie? 
to just rinse that. I'm going to share um, share this again. So anyone who needs to take a grab of that cityscape, and of course, if you'd rather do the um, Kew Gardens building below, you're welcome to, Charlie said. Maybe you have time to do both, but I'll put that up there for a moment. I will just concentrate on one. If you can, concentrate on the, the cityscape. Um, what city is this? Um, it requires a very, I mean, it's so different from drawing a plant that, um, and I think the way to approach it is you've got one fabulously easy horizontal line in there, which is almost the horizon. Establish that first. Don't worry too much about the lower level. Try to sort of look at the negative shapes and use something reasonably fine because, well, you don't have to actually, because I think you could also do it just with simple strokes. Um, but just progress gently. Don't worry too much about how it fits onto your paper, but do frame it first. You'll find it will be very helpful if you frame the drawing. Um, That's what I was just doing. Just this very simple little frame. So Charlie, will you share your screen on this one? I will, I will. For the benefit of all. So I'm gonna tell you guys right now, I'm going to add color once I've done my line. I can't help okay. it. It's just the one, just the one. I, oh yes, it's working. Right, share. Yeah. Okay. So All right. Right. So I think for this, I'm probably going to use either my Twisby or a fine liner. So there's my fine liner or a fine liner. Uh, I've got lots more. And let's just see how we go. But I do think it helps if you just give a quick frame first and decide that, right, it's going to fit into that. Mm -hmm. So let's say it's going to fit into that. And then you've got this lovely horizontal. Charlie, did you say what city this is? Uh, this is London. This is London? There's so much construction. Is this by yeah. the hospital? Is that what this is? Talky talky. Then you've got, you can't see the shard, but this is the NatWest Tower. Yeah. Um, and then in the front, you've got King's Cross Station down at the bottom there. Mm. Oh, that's King's Cross. Of course it is. Was oh, that London Bridge? No, that. Mm, that's King's Cross. King's Cross, I think. It can't be King's Cross because it's right on the river. That must be London Bridge Station, that is. Anyway, so I reckon choose your starting point. As I say, things do fit quite nicely onto that horizontal, so that, that will help. But then you want to sort of start to the, and I wouldn't be too precious about it actually, mm -hmm. because you can come back to it, just gradually build it. It will work out, I think. I hope I say that. But this is a very different kind of mark making, I think. It is. And that's why we chose it, because it's very different. And then the other thing I get, it's not really about line, but is trying to look at relationships of things. So, for instance, this point is below that point. Um, so it, it quite often works quite well if you're sort of looking at where, how things relate to each other. But the truth is nobody's going to come and check. And you can just see this, what we call the Swiss Ray building, which is the Gherkin, just behind. And I don't know what that new building is. Right, so somewhere about there. Where's the gherkin? 
just behind the slightly triangular building in the center of the picture. Oh, come on, you can't, you can't even see that back there. Now I can that you've said it, but. But you could, if you wanted to, you could fudge it and make a real gherkin stand out, right? Of course you can. So I'm going to do that. Listen, at this time of night, for me, we make the rules. We say what we know. <laughs> That's right. I have another recommendation. This is more of a painterly recommendation, but it works for drawing too. So things of the same value or that you wanna give less importance to, you can just make one shape out of them. So for example, all that stuff in the foreground can just be one shape because it's not nearly as important. So just kind of blend it together. Like if you squint, can blend yeah. all of those buildings together. I think also the other sort of tip that I got from actually another painter was just look for a pattern, make it into a pattern and it'll work. And, it, and I think he's dead right as well. It does sort of work as a pattern. I think you're right. Yeah, and I, I don't know, I see the bridge here. So that must be, yeah. That must be Victoria Station or? No, 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 Victoria is not on the river. That's on the river. So <laughs> the bridge in front of it is, um, just a minute, I will tell you. Okay. Southwark, no, it's not Southwark Bridge. Yes, it must be Southwark Bridge. Because it's not Blackfriars, it's beyond Blackfriars, so it must be Southwark Bridge. And then that must be Cannon Street Station. Ha-ha, worked it out finally. Cannon Street Station. Yeah. Okay. Right, so I, my frame is slightly short, but that is okay. Right, let's come over here. Another one here, another one here, another one here. Okay, so I've nearly got a silhouette now, which is pretty much what I wanted. Now, what I need. Eight minutes, so maybe about halfway through at this Actually, point. Actually, it goes quick, doesn't it? Oh, it's a big crane as well. I know, and I, I, that crane is cut off on the top. I wish I knew what the top of it looked like. <laughs> I do, I'm like, what does it look like? Nice, 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 nice. Right.
This one is tough. <clears throat> yeah, well, it was supposed to be tough. We don't want it easy. Not too easy anyway. So are you using color, Anne? I am, but I'm really trying to use a lot of line in my color so that I don't um, I don't ruin the assignment. I'm trying is I'm trying to interpret the assignment rather than disregard it. I feel like it must be almost time. Like we're about to hit time. No, um, no. I just don't know. I feel like we're getting close. Ah. Could be wrong. Could be very wrong. quite tricky isn't it just to get some detail in there and or at least the the illusion of detail I think is what what you really need to try to find which I must say is difficult it's just symbols right exactly Things sort of flatten out as they get further away as well, as they do. I right, need an outline. I need an outline. My pen has gone dry. Right, that pen didn't work. Really, that's pretty fantastic. I don't, I don't yeah. Uh, <laughs> trying to sort of just quickly get there before we finish. Well, there's two more minutes, actually, so don't have to be too, too quick. I don't think I've ever really done a, a sort of city skyline like this before, actually, if I'm quite honest, which I am. I haven't either, but I've done um, a lot of boat stuff. And if you're in the marina, it's kind of the same. Like there's a lot of repeating shapes and things that yeah. you just try to need, need to try to capture the idea of because it's just impossible to get them all. It's impossible. So.
I must say I'm really enjoying this. Enjoy your last bits because it's just about over. Everybody. Uh -oh. Ten seconds. Oh no. Ten, nine. Oh, that's the time. Uh, wow, that was really fun. Really enjoyed that. Yeah, me too. Me too. Right. I did I did sort of get nearly there you really did yeah but um, you want to um, turn on. your thoughts so that we can all share we have a um, yep. moment or two look at us we're right on time too and if anyone had any questions this would be an amazing time i want to put the um link to tip charlie if you enjoyed today you're welcome to tip him and you don't have to but I'll put the link to his PayPal tip jar in there so you can no pressure. Free. And yeah, I would like to, let's see. I want to change the view, but let's see. I'll hold mine up oh, until you. everyone's ready. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. And I will stop sharing. Um, that's me. I'll tell you what would really move this massively forward. I'll show you, is if I got out my, a few, um, they're not, they're not actually Tombos, these are from Faber Castell, and my favourite one has just about run out of juice, which is really annoying, but just a tiny bit of tone on this would really sort of lift it. The lines are great though, I love the lines. Beautiful. Just need a little bit of tone. Just to help with things like this. Yeah. This. This. So, Charlie, you busted out of the frame, and I busted out of my frame too. Yeah, but that's the joy of it because that helped me to get to bust out the frame, which is sort mm -hmm. of because without it. So Charlie, I have to go because I have to go to work. Okay, guys. But I want to okay. see everyone's work. So can can you just stop share for a minute so I can see everyone? Because I, I can't go to work left hanging. There we go. Oh wow, everyone. Wow. Oh. Oh Karen. Karen, hold yours in front of your face, actually. Maybe we could see it better. Oh wow. Yes. Brilliant, everyone. Brilliant. Put color in I did use my color for a lot of line though. I really tried hard to do. Beautiful. Everyone did wonderfully. And Christine, right. I like how you just emphasized that little, the train station with just a little bit of color. I, I figured if you could cheat, I could put a little color there too. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what's quite nice as well, quite a few of you have not worried too much about straight lines or perspective. Yeah. It's just, and it looks like it's part of the globe. So they're beautiful. They're right, really I great, that... everyone. I, I'm going to let you stay on with Charlie. Charlie, I just want to make sure you're still host. I'm pretty sure right. you are. But I have to run to my day job. So Thanks. I'll let Good you guys day. stay on and chat with Charlie. But I want to say goodbye and thank you to everybody. Okay. If Bye, you're not on our mailing list, like Rona, I don't know if you are, um, you can get our, you can go onto our website. And you can join, the, and then you could hear directly about these kinds of workshops that we're doing. So thank you, everybody. Thank you. I'll speak to you on Tuesday.